Hello viewers of Sounding Board and tonight we're going to talk about Milestone Returns Infinite Edition Zero Why? Because this comic book was really frowned upon mainly because they made Static into a Antifa Black Lives Matter protester <clears throat> and in the end he really isn't, which I was glad to see, you know, because this is the picture right here. And also, too, all the information is completely wrong about these protests. You know, they make these look like all black, but they're really majority of white with uh, virtual signaling problems. And um, you got she was sleeping when in actuality it's kind of like she wasn't they're talking about Brianna Taylor and really this is it's kind of almost inappropriate because the information is wrong and it makes the police out to be bad because by now if they want to do historically police have been defunded and demoralized by these people and so, they wouldn't have the firepower to do this. But going back to to uh, to um, to static, static was there one to hide from a bully, the bully that's bullying him in the original series, Hotspot, and. To impress a girl, which I was kind of glad to see because I th I just saw his origin episode of a cartoon, and Static is basically the Black Peter Parker. It's the only way to describe it. You know, he's a character that learns. This time he learns. He, the only problem is he loses his ability to learn. With great responsibility comes with great power comes great responsibility because he doesn't have the problem of having a gun. And then the next part of the story is hard hardware, the Black Iron Man of this universe, which I don't know too much about. Same as Icon, and I think these other characters are basically Blood Syndicate. But it focuses a lot more on Static and his developing of his powers due to the the Big Bang and how he's dealing with Hotspot. But the funny part is, like all modern superheroes, the secret identity is not as important. So he attacks his white oppressor or bully. And he may not he may be not even be completely white. He might be half and half. Half white, half black, and hates his white half. Unlike in the original in the cartoon, he was a, a white ginger. This time he's a red headed kid with his hair painted red. And the funny part is this artist really makes static really feminine looking. And then we get Icon, the black Superman of this universe, with his sidekick Rocket, who has a questionable background. I think they gave her a cleaner background than they did in the original series, because she ends up getting pregnant and having a child out of wedlock that they have to deal with. But I think Holocaust is the leader of the Blood Syndicate. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on it because I've never read a majority of these. I've just seen the characters. But like I said, I was kind of glad that at least they kept a majority of the integrity of, of, of uh, Static because when you think about it, if Static was a BML protester, he'd have a different motivation. He wouldn't have the attitude of great power comes great responsibility because he's not a weakling. He's a person that's following the masses. And 
he would use his power without without thought or recourse. He'd be almost another hotspot. Or, as people described, uh, New 52 Superman. It's like, why read Superman when he was just a super-powered version of Batman? And that, that, that version of Superman really turned off a lot of readers. It turned me off because it wasn't the Superman I know. Because Superman's always supposed to be a, a, a beacon of hope, and this that one wasn't. And basically, from what I can gather from uh, Icon's origin, he's just basically a re, re, ver, re, refurbished Martian Manhunter. And I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing they did when they could have just used John Jones for it. And at the same time, too, this is in the comic book era when John, as a character, goes from a white detective, which he was known for, to a black detective. And there's a new character in town. I don't know if he appeared later in the Milestone series, but he's kind of a hybrid Batman slash Punisher, a very aggressive character, but he's kind of like Hooded Justice in a lot of ways. He indiscriminately attacks all kinds of characters. And I'm not for sure who David and Kelly are, but it's, it seems like it's a woke character because they're Asian and also, it's a female character with a man stuck inside of her. So, it's really hard to say now. Because, where is... You got all these characters you see here. But you don't see the fourth character from the Milestone universe, which was Zombie. Because Zombie appeared, and he was the, tot toted as the first Hispanic-based character to give representation to the Hispanics in the DCU. Plus, this issue wasn't that bad of a read. I'm not curious about most of the other titles because the characters don't interest me enough. Maybe it's because of culture or mythos. Or because I kind of like what Dwayne McDuffie would do with his writing. And Dwayne McDuffie really understood the hero myth and wasn't caught up. He understood the time period of how blacks, whites, racism, uh, black culture was. And he incorporated that. He didn't slant that point of view too much. And he, he respected the white superhero because he grew up with the white superheroes and knew... That their mythos is what inspired him to do what he did today, which was cr help create this universe. The new modern writers have no problem hijacking modern characters and tokenizing them. Like the new Wonder Woman, the new what they want to do with Superman, the new Batman, the two, I should say the two Batman, um, Wonder Girl. And the new version of the Flash. And it's like, is it really necessary for them to hijack predominant characters and put their identity politics and um, sexual identity uh, politics into these comics? My answer is no. Because um, the hero's mythos was to tell us how to get over stuff. How to deal with each other. Not... Create, indoctrinate people to social messages um, and like I said that's why I, was, the, I have problem storyline historically with how this comic book works especially with the Black Lives Matter uh, angle and the cops and white people because they really really the writer of this really wants to make white people bad and in the original stuff, the white people weren't really the bad guys. They were too busy fighting within their culture trying to help the black community. 
not fighting a, a, a mysterious boogeyman of white supremacy. And so, we'll have to see how this series goes, but as you can see, they have the core characters, and then in the back you see this group of, of, of female characters. So, is the next, next gen of these characters going to be a woke style series of Milestone, or is it going to stay true to McDuffie's view of a world of Milestone? It's hard to say. We'll have to see as it progresses. But, like I said, this was a good read. And if you're curious and know about Milestone, I'd recommend it. But if not, you might have problems with it. So until next time, this is The Sounding Board, signing off.